Greetings, my esteemed subscribers. I have read a very good book, The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McKeon. I actually read this last year and now it is high time I make a separate video on it. And if you have read my own book, of course, Dauntless, I mention this book in it as well. And before I begin to elaborate on this book in particular, I can just say that straight off, yeah, I do recommend it. It's a very good book with uh, some profound teachings. And I made a video on mewing a while back, uh, almost one and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, mewing is the correct tongue posture. So basically what you want to do is you want to have your tongue Unless you're speaking or eating or drinking, etc. You want to have it on the top of your mouth and you want to keep your lips closed and your teeth together. So, uh, like that at um, any time. So you're not slack-jawed because this has quite a bit to do with mouth breathing and the oxygen advantage. So they go in together. So if you haven't watched my mewing video, you can... Check it out, I will link it in uh, the description box below. And just a mewing update as well, since I talked about it, I might give you an update. Um, I've done it since I made the video. Uh, you know, I haven't really seen any aesthetic uh, differences, but that's not the primary point at this stage. It's just if you have a correct way of doing something that will improve your life, you should do it. And then it might take some time to see results. But uh, I do notice it's easier to incorporate the teachings of this book if you have a correct tongue posture so that you always breathe through your nose and you keep your this part of your face um, tighter so to speak then also another book i have recommended and i continue to recommend i've also made a video on it nutrition and physical degeneration by gallant western price this also goes into this so you have three different books no, actually two books and one YouTube channel, which is uh, the channel of Mike Mew. I can link it also below if you want. You have these three things that are working in um, with each other, basically. So Western Price talks about the nutrition of things. What kind of nutrition you grew up with. And The Oxygen Advantage also talks about Western Price. And I will take just uh, an example from it, from the book. In the 1930s, a dentist by the name Dr. Weston Price investigated the cause of facial changes and crooked teeth in various countries and civilizations. One of his observations, while visiting Gaelic people living on the Hybridean islands off the coast of Scotland, was that the children became mouth breathers after parents switched from their natural diet of seafood and oatmeal to the modernized diet of angel food cake, white bread, and many white flour commodities. Marmalade, canned vegetables, sweetened fruit juices, jams, and confections. So he talks about Western Price here as well. And long story short, if you have a bad diet as a child, you might underdevelop your facial features, which might then lead to mouth breathing. Mouth breathing might lead to other bad things, such as such as crooked teeth, uh, poor airways, and other symptoms that makes you less athletic, that makes you less healthy, that makes you more prone to sickness, etc. So they are working in with each other, all of these bad things. And a note here on Patrick McKeon is that he, uh, you can watch on YouTube as well, he has some good talks. He was a mouth breather for like 20 years because he had a condition when he was younger, so he had to breathe through his mouth, because, you know, if uh, the nose is stuck all the time, yeah, you need to get air in somehow, so you need to mouth breathe. But it's not optimal to do so. So basically, what you can say is that nose breathing is what you should do all the time. And mouth breathing is what you should do in certain situations, as in, you know, you have a fight or flight situation. Um, so in the gym, you can mouth breathe during the heavy exercises. If you are, you know, in last round in a boxing, sparring or something, yeah, you can mouth breathe, but otherwise try to breathe through your nose as much as possible. And this is especially true when you're resting. If you're breathing through your mouth when resting, you're sending your body the signals of a fight or flight, so you get less rest. So, for example, if you're sleeping and breathe through your mouth, you will get a worse sleep, because then you send the body the completely wrong signals. Whereas if you're 
only breathe through your nose, you send it the relaxing signals. So I've said this before in my sleep video, I use this sometimes to just make sure I don't breathe through my mouth when I sleep. Because if you tape your mouth, you can only breathe through your nose. It also helps to keep your jaw up against your um, uh, upper uh, part of the face. So you get the mewing effect also when you're sleeping. So that is something to keep in mind. And for me, again, if you've been following me on the Physique Manufactorum, I have experimented a bit with running. First, I did last year a little experiment only breathing through my nose when I went for a run in the forest. And, uh, you know, at first it felt extremely uncomfortable. It felt like you were breathing through a um, through a straw or something, but eventually you get used to it. Now, of course, you can't run as fast because you don't get as much uh, oxygen into your body, but it was a fun experience. Then what I do now is if I'm going for hill sprints, I breathe in through my mouth and out through my nose until I get to the stage where I can only breathe through my nose. So I have to breathe a bit through the mouth at first because of the, you know, you're at the top of your heart rate. But then as soon as possible, I switch back to nose breathing. Um, then when the heart rate and breathing is back to normal, I sprint again. So uh, you can try out a few different techniques there. So the book, it contains quite a lot of exercises as well, things to think about, mainly in regards to breathing less. So for example, if you want to train your breathing, you can, when you walk down the street, you can just decide, you know, between this lamp and the next lamp in 20 meters, you will hold your breath. And then you try to not overcompensate by breathing so much. So you have all of these different breathing techniques. And um, yeah, in terms of a book review, I can just say it contains a lot of good wisdom backed up by science and backed up with his own experience, backed up with the work he's done with other athletes. So an interesting point he said was that it's a lot of focus on eating less. He also wants to see that we breathe less, so the oxygen becomes more potent, so to speak. So basically, to conclude, try to always breathe through your nose, only breathe through your mouth in certain situations in the gym or in martial arts or if you do sprints etc but in the meantime breathe through your nose so if you are grappling for example in a short burst of energy perhaps you want to perform a takedown or something yeah you can breathe through the mouth but if you have the opportunity for a short rest you could try to calm down with some nose breathing now of course it depends on the situation but try to nose breathe as for as long as possible in certain situations you can switch to mouth breathing when you need the air in um, fast. Then of course if you do heavy lifting in the gym it might be a good idea because you want to evoke that fight or flight sensation as well because you're you know you want to perform at your top but otherwise try to nose breathe to calm down to make the most out of um, the oxygen. So to conclude and uh, to tie these two books in together, I do believe if you read one, you can also read the other because the, um, you know, the teachings are quite similar. Especially important if you are a parent, of course, if you have young children, it might be good to educate yourself on the potential hazards that might arise with a bad diet. So for me personally, I have a daughter, I intend to shield her from as much sugar as possible, only give her good food so that she might develop normally, develop good healthy airways so she doesn't get all of different things that are associated with unhealthy living basically. So a proper diet can lead to a proper breathing which can lead to a more healthy life and the opposite is true if you feed your child a lot of sugar etc. Uh, the child might develop, you know, a poor facial structure, a poor um, ability to breathe, and that might have catastrophic effects later on if they want to go into sports, etc. So, super important stuff, I thought, to share this, and uh, in conclusion, yes, I can recommend the book, definitely worth reading. I, of course, also want to recommend my own book, you can order it, link in the description. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and have a great weekend ahead. XXO, boom!